Welcome to Karen Stenberg Howard Friedman for presenting and thank you for coming presenting the One Health tool and uh, I will hand over the microphone to them. So Karen, floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon and good morning, everybody. Uh, um, basically, I will give a, a short PowerPoint uh, on behalf of the of the UN Interagency Working Group on Costing. Uh, because the One Health tool is, is developed by the uh, interagency working group, and I am just one of the members, so I'm, I'm happy to, to make the presentation on behalf of the group. And then I believe that Howard Friedman, who is another member of the group from UNFP, will uh, give an overview of the tool itself. And I think it's more interesting to to see the tool than to see the slide. So I'll I'll try to to go through them quite. Uh, quickly. Okay, so if we just go to the next slide. Basically, this is just to show the background of, of how this One Health tool was developed because we know that um, the UN agencies have supported the development of many different costing tools and, and also other agencies and institutions, and many of you on the call uh, belong to these and know these other tools very well. But in 2008, there was a meeting where uh, some of the commonly used tools were reviewed. And as a basis of this meeting, there was an agreement to develop a joint UN tool. And this development has been led by this interagency working group on costing, which, which was also established in 2008. And the members include um, WHO, UNICEF, the World Bank, UNH, UNFP, and UNDP. And this is the group where, which has overseen the development of the One Health tool. But we also have a lot of partners supporting us, some providing funding, uh, others providing technical support. And it includes the, the Global Fund, uh, Global Health Workforce Alliance, the Health Metrics Network, IHP Plus, and some bilateral agencies have given money to IHP Plus. And we also work with partners like UN Women and projects that work on specific health planning components like USA Deliver or Optimize, which works specifically on logistics planning and supply chain planning. And then we also have a, a country reference group with health planners where we have Ministry of Health staff who become familiar with the tool and they give their technical input into the development of the tool so that we can ensure it will respond to their needs for strategic planning. Could we have the next slide, please? Thank you. So the overall um, purpose of One Health is to support medium-term strategic health planning. And at the national level. That's the primary or key purpose. And it was really to provide countries with a unified tool. And we could say it's unified in three ways. One is that it brings together planning, costing, budgeting, impact analysis for health outcomes, and financial state. But some of the previous tools also did this. So I think another key aspect of this unification is that the fact that it really brings together or aims to bring together the planning for disease programs with health systems. And then finally, of course, because we are working together, it's unified in terms of the one UN process where the agencies are working together uh, to support countries to do integrated planning. And the purpose is really for the health sector, primarily uh, the public sector. It does allow for incorporating some activities from private sector and some non-health sector activities, but it's primarily public health sector. And the intended audience is really for planners in Ministry of Health. And because it's a sector-wide tool, it's really for the Department of Planning as the primary intended user possible for also for uh, to do specific program analysis and users also include the disease specific program
program planners or the planners that are responsible for specific health system components, like for example, human resource planning within the national strategic health plan. And of course, NGOs, other agencies, UN, etc. But the primary audience is the Ministry of Health. And next, please. I think the next slide. Ah, it's showing now. Okay, good. So basically, the One Health is aiming to address certain challenges that we found some of the pre-existing tools were not always best equipped to address these. And the first one is basically a lot of countries were saying there are too many tools for different vertical disease programs and they don't really fit well together. So if a country wants to do national strategic plans, they may use a variety of tools which all address different programs or different parts of the system. You have the TB tool, immunization tool, MBB, uh, different health, uh, human resource planning tools, etc. And the ambition of One Health is then to bring all these tools into an integrated framework so that instead of having to use 10 different tools, you just use one and the outputs are harmonized and brought into a common framework. A second challenge was what we see in many countries, we have a delinked planning cycle, whereby we could have some program plans which run over a certain number of years and which are not harmonized with the time frame of the national strategic health plan. And maybe not even with each other, so you have an HIV plan uh, which runs for different years to the reproductive health plan, which runs for, for different years to the uh, national plan, etc. So again, the role of, of One Health is to, the, the ambition is that if the same tool is used to plan for these different programs, they can easily be brought into a harmonized planning cycle so that we have targets and ambitions that correspond within the same time frame and so that we're able to look at the financial implications in the fiscal space within the common time frame and of course also to bring partners together. The third challenge was a little configuration of health system both in the tools and in the existing national strategic plan and here again the aim is to ensure that in one health there is a strong component for health systems planning and whatever planning is done, for example for individual programs or interventions like reproductive health or child health, it's very, very strongly linked to a health system platform. And uh, just as a footnote there, uh, this analysis done in 2009 for the high level force indicated that the majority of resources for low-income countries would be needed for health systems. So it's really to ensure that when countries do their strategic planning, the tool can help them to see uh, what kind of investments are needed for the system. And then finally, in many countries we were seeing this process where there was a first a plan and then there was a costing, uh, which is not always the best way to do a plan because you may find that whatever you plan for, you don't, that you don't have the resources to implement it. So the role of One Health here is really to ensure that costing becomes part of the planning process already from the beginning and that whatever the plan uh, is developed should consider the, the cost analysis, should consider the budget and the financial projections and the fiscal space. So these are some of the challenges that we hope to address, uh, just to improve strategic planning and for better health outcomes. And could we have the next slide, please? Okay. So this is just for reference, also just to show you that we didn't start from scratch. The members of the interagency working group, they all knew the different tools from their own agencies and we've been working together to make sure that the best parts of the pre-existing tools were incorporated into One Health. So these, these 
a table, it just lists some of the key issues which were found to be the strengths of the different tools and which were incorporated into One Health. And next slide, please. This slide shows how the tool is set up and how it will demonstrate it to you shortly. But just conceptually, the tool is built up of different modules, and the modules are all linked. And what you can see here, there are six health system building blocks, which are in yellow. The infrastructure and equipment, the human resource, the logistics, health information system, governance, leadership, and financing policy. And each of these has a module where the user can plan and cost for those health systems. And then in the middle, we have, within this envelope of health system, we have the health uh, service delivery planning and costing. And this can be done uh, by using the matrix of levels, where you plan packages of interventions and services for different levels. Or it can be done using different programs, like HIV, TB, malaria, and so on. And there are different entry points, but they are both linked. So if you choose to do your planning by by levels, you can also do it by program. And we also have here on to the right on the green, we have the impact modules. And these refer to the modules that allow the user to calculate the impact of the strategic plan in terms of child mortality, maternal mortality, TB, HIV, um, stunting and wasting from nutrition, etc. So if you just click next, right, so all of these planning and costing modules are also considered within an even greater envelope, which refers to a financial sustainability analysis. So the process or the way the tool is set up is that you have these different modules for planning for services and systems. They're all linked. And in the end, they're all jointly considered and compared across a financial sustainability analysis, and also with the impact. Next slide, please. So what's really new and better? I think previous slides mentioned some of the challenges we tried to address. So one, one thing that's new with One Health is this unified model, which we mentioned already. Secondly, we work together with the IHP Plus to make sure the tool is aligned with the joint assessment of national strategy. Many countries are now using this YANS tool to assess the national health planning process. So we work to align the One Health with these principles. The third bullet refers to the impact. And the One Health, it incorporates many of the UN epidemiological impact models. For example, the LIST tool, the life safe tool, which refers to child and maternal mortality, is fully incorporated into One Health. It's basically part of the software. The same refers to AIM, which is for HIV planning. And then we have some new models developed where there were no previously existing modules, where there was a gap. So for TB, there was no module at CC, so we developed one for TB impact. And the other um, final bullet is then referring to the fact that planning is carried out within the framework of health system and financial system. Next, please. OK, this slide is just to show that one of the additional advantages of One Health is that you can, ent you can use different entry points. So you can enter planning by program, or you can enter using planning by levels, or you can set it up and do planning uh, for systems. And they're all linked and, and integrated. And next, please. This is another feature of the tool. It's showing a screenshot from the tool. And basically, what we worked hard is to ensure that we have strong features of country contextualization. So the user can adapt the tool to their country setting. 
So one of the things you may want to adapt is for each intervention the kind of uh, treatment protocol that's used in the country. So the tool comes equipped with defaults. If they're all defaults based on the global recommendations by the UN, like WHO and UNFPA, but the user can always go in and change the assumption based on what drugs are given and what's the price of the drug, etc. And you can also see here the total minutes of staff time, which is used as a, a calculation to compare the staff needs based on the intervention with whatever human resources are available in the health system. So we will see that in, in the later slide. And next, please. So in addition to the intervention planning, the objective of One Health is also to strengthen program planning. And this refers to programs like immunization program or IMCI or reproductive health. And it allows the programs to do a bottom-up estimation of costs for their activities. So just click Next, please. Right, so this is a screenshot from the tool just to show you that um, the tool has certain menus that you click and then it allows you to contextualize again to your national setting. I'll click again, please. And then the user can do very detailed planning if he or she would like to. This example is showing, for example, training costs of the national program if they want to develop a budget for programmatic training. They can indicate uh, what is the type of training, what is the staff to be trained, what is the length of the training. And then for each year, they can set targets of the staff to be trained. Next slide, please. Um, another strength is that the tool allows for health system planning. and the way we work is that we have tried to use to the extent possible the approaches and formats that are recommended by experts who know health systems planning. So this is a screenshot from um, the infrastructure part of the tool where we worked with experts in infrastructure planning and they advised us on what the tool should include. And this slide also shows a feature of the tool that it allows, again, this contextualization to the country, and the user has different options how they would like to set the targets or how they would like to enter some input data. Next, please. This is showing an output of the tool. So this is a, uh, an example where a country has entered data into the tool. And this is quite an interesting slide. It's showing how the targets of the program are compared with the health system implications. So the example shown here is with regards to the availability of a staff type, like nurses. And we compare the expected demand on the nurses' time based on the intervention coverage scale-up targets by year. In the previous slide, we saw how for each intervention, the user could indicate the number of minutes used. And then in this slide, it's showing the output of that where on the left-hand bar in each year, we can see the added program demands on the time of the nurses. So this is the full-time equivalent nurses based on whatever you put in, in terms of the minutes needed and then the coverage and, of course, population, epidemiology, etc. So it's all mathematically calculated based on the user input. And on the right-hand side, for each year, we have a blue bar, a dark blue bar, and that shows what is the actual plan to scale up the number of nurses in this country, the human resource plan. So we can compare the human resource plan with the needs of the program. And in this case, it looks reasonable, but there may be other cases where the estimated time by the program exceeds the number of staff available. So then this graph can illustrate um, where there may be some challenges in the system and there's a need for further discussion or examining the priorities 
for examining whether there's a need to further strengthen health systems. So the tool has a lot of these kind of outputs that basically aim to feed into the policy discussions of the country. Next slide, please. This is another kind of output. Again, it's looking at implications of program plans, and the ambition is to facilitate the discussions on the priority setting and integration. So remember earlier we showed we saw a slide where you could put in the number of training courses, for example, uh, for a program like child health. And that was an input. And now here we can see one of the graphs that pulled together all the inputs of the different programs and put them into an output table. So we can see the joint um, demand uh, on the system based on these training targets. So one of the outputs here are the training costs. But there are also other outputs which show, for example, the implications of the training on the health worker time. How many days a year would they need to be absent from health facilities? if indeed they were to attend all these training courses. So the tool provides all these output tables for a user to see, OK, but what are really the demands on the health system if I want to implement these program activities and program targets? Next, please. Another feature of One Health is that it allows for detailed budget mapping per item. So once you've done your costing, you've entered your strategies, then there is a feature which you can see here where each item can be mapped to a category in the national budget. And the user, of course, is the one to define the categories in the budget. And this can be done either by typing them in or just importing them from an Excel sheet. So if you already have an Excel sheet with all the budget categories, they can be easily imported and they will appear here in this drop down. And the user can have up to seven budgets simultaneously, which is very helpful because you can have, um, at the same time, a cost that maps to the budget categories of the national budget, at the same time to a global fund proposal, at the same time to an advocacy document, etc. And next, please. So uh, we're almost at the final slide, but this is just to show the availability of some of the default data in the tool because it's very comprehensive, it covers the entire health sector. And just to illustrate that we try to put in as much default data as possible within the tool and to the extent possible country specific data. So that when the user opens it, there is some pre populated data, but he or she can always overwrite it and replace it with country specific data. And next, please. So the final slides focus on some of the key outputs, again, of One Health. And one of the key things that it does is it allows the user to compare scenarios. So this is very important for strategic planning in terms of what we discussed earlier, that you don't just first develop a strategic plan and then cost it. But the tool can really help you in the development of a strategic plan to look at different um, implications for the health system or for the financial space or for the impact. So this is an example where we did three scenarios for Laos. So the scenarios are called Laos Base, Laos 70, and Laos 90. And 70 refers to 70% coverage and 90, 90% coverage. And you can see the costs go up as you increase the coverage. Of course, the under five mortality will go down as you increase the coverage. And in this case, um, it was compared with different scenarios for fiscal space. So there was one realistic fiscal space scenario and one growth scenario. And this is one way you could use the tool to see, for example, uh, which scenarios would be affordable. So in this particular case, even the Lao base scenario would not be affordable with the realistic fiscal space, um, whereas the 90% um, scenario would be affordable with the growth scenario. So this is one way to sort of look at different scenarios and compare 
where to put the emphasis, whether it's related to trying to raise additional funding or maybe scaling down a bit your, your level of ambition if the expected funding is not likely to be there. Next, please. This is another example which we did for Burkina Faso. And in this case, in the last slide, we had um, fiscal space or financial space as the comparison. And here we can instead see what's the limiting factors. Is it human resources? So in this particular case, again, there were three scenarios, 50% coverage, 70 or 90. And you can see the cost of the plan goes up. But the capacity utilization of nurses will also go up. Because as you scale up your intervention coverage, more time needs to be um, given to providing the intervention. And in this case, we just looked at nurses. Of course, there are other staff categories as well. But based on the scenarios that were inputted, you can see already at 70%, we don't have enough uh, nurses. Actually, we would exceed by 10% the availability of nurses. So this is one, another way where you can compare different scenarios and see what's really realistic given our health system. Uh, how can we address the challenges? Do we need to further invest in the health system? Or do we need to uh, maybe look at um, reducing our ambition in terms of coverage? Or are there other ways we could uh, look at different policy issues like task shifting or uh, outsourcing, etc. And uh, next, please. OK, so this is the final slide. And just to illustrate that um, we have an official website for the tool. It's through the IHP Plus website. And uh, the tool will soon become publicly available. What Howard will show is, is the draft version. But it will be available through this website. And if you just click, there should be some more. Yes, we have a guidance document uh, prepared. So they're available, and they will be available on this website. And also within the tool, there are help screens. So you can get live uh, feedback on your questions. And then also, there's a lifesaver function. There's the function where you can get a response within two working days if you have a specific uh, question. So these are the user guidance features that we have been working on. And the tool is likely to become publicly available very, very soon. We're just doing the final quality control checks now and making sure the guidance documents are fully reflected in it. I think this is the end of the presentation. And then I had additional slides if we need to, to, to look at specific issues. But that was the slide of the official presentation. So I'll hand it back to Carlos. Thank you very much, everyone. If you want to know more, you can check out our other videos, or you can click on one of the social network sites. Thank you for watching.